Class 2 to finish the card at Happy Valley on Wednesday night and the Mercury will be rising here. It'll be hot, 1,200 metres uh, distance. Wame friend, uh, last start winner at Chartin over the uh, six furlongs. Fabulous one, loads of speed from Barrier 2. House of Fun, he'll be prominent from the eight. Born in China, a last start winner. He'll get back. CJ's got pace from the five. Fabinski, first start for Michael Friedman with the gear change as well. And fantastic, eh? he likes to roll. Gets into Class 2 for the first time. He's come up with Barrier 3, that is ideal. So back at the touchscreen uh, for this last race, uh, Brett, and well, there's lots of options, but fabulous one, probably will find the front. You would think he's got the most speed, Andrew, to eventually get to the front, yes, but there are other very fast horses. Fantastic eight. It'd be interesting to see what Umberto wants to do, whether he wants to hold out, fabulous one, and um, find the rail. You've got other horses in the race as well. Wame Friend's been showing a lot of pace. House of Fun generally over races if it's a bit of a slow tempo and CJ we know he's quite fast out of the gates too so yeah there's a lot of pace in the race there's no doubt about that it should give some of the horses like Archippus, Mr Genuine and Born in China their chance in the final stages you would think. Yeah some openings some closes uh, Paul what have you seen in the morning though? Yeah we're a really good finish I think for this particular race. Born in China just going away from a, a, a workhorse here he's flying he, he had leg problems ever since he got here but he's well over those now and he is going very well. He did win them in a row a couple of seasons ago, too, born in China. So last start winner there. Here's a second gallop. Just to show you that it uh, wasn't a fluke, that other gallop. He's, he's, uh, Dennis Shipp's got him really going nicely. So uh, Den uh, Douglas White, it's a bit, bit of a tricky draw, Barrier 9. But everything else is all tickety-boo with uh, him. Uh, Vabinski's changed stables. He's, uh, he's a real interesting runner for me. Big price. Now with Michael Freeman's always had ability, this horse. You can see him just moving away from a lower-rated horse and glory horsey, but he's still uh, doing what he has to do. Uh, really nice and fantastic eight. He's a nice horse, this one, and he's so consistent. Um, and and his, all his starts here, and with a really light weight, I, I can expect him to be uh, right there when they taking the photos at the end. All right. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he gets on against some uh, some decent benchmarks uh, here. Uh, before we get into the uh, the race analysis, uh, let's start off with our likely leader here. Well, that's what we think anyway at this stage. That's Fabulous One and his trainer, Chris So. Chris, Fabulous One, he goes to the Valley on Wednesday yes. night. Is this what he needs to get back to the winner's circle? I hope so, you know, because uh, every time, you know, he's... Um, if the first time back to the... Uh, no, it's the second time back to the Class, class 2, and the rating is dropped a bit. And I hope, you know, he get a good chance to... Because he's uh, in Happy Valley, I think, you know, it's more suit for him because the straight is uh, not like Chartin. It's not that further. That's why, you know, his dash is always, you know, and in the last 100, he slowed down. That's why, you know, we try to put him in, in, in there. Yeah. How is the horse? How has he come out of that last run on the dirt? Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. You know, after the put-up, you know, eating well, everything is normal. I think it's, you know, it's, uh, it's not an easy horse to ride. You know, even the kid, you know, he did a good job, but it's not easy. But I think, you know, maybe that's why, you know, I tried to put Nash on and try to help. In the race two on Wednesday night, it's a race that looks like it's got a, a lot of speed. Is that a concern for you? That's the problem because, but we have a good draw. You know, we run our way, you know, we tried to, because he, he got a gay speed. I think, you know, we, if, if we can control the pace, you know, we, we, I think we still have a good chance. So he leads. Is he still there in front when they hit the post? Probably not, Andrew. I'm going to tip against him. Um, you know, he's a, he's a jump and run type. I think last start, he just tried to cuddle him a little bit too much, I think, Matthew Poon, and then he was overhauled. If he jumps and he's allowed to get fluent and run, that's when he does his best racing. But I still think there's a lot of quality behind him. Yeah, two starts, one win at Happy Valley, so it sort of speaks for itself. And... I haven't got him in, um, a bit like Brett, but I just because there's so much pace in this race, there's mm. you know there's 65 mm. leaders really. Yeah. yeah, C plus three course leaders beaten two and a quarter by Mr. Stunning, mm. two starts back, but yeah. there he goes, not in the tips. It does really um, well. Let's have a look <laughs> at uh, a few here. Wame friends beaten a nose by Western Express a couple of starts back. That form worked out obviously very well indeed. The other horses uh, to take note of uh, in this particular event, uh, Blocker D, who fades out of it, and uh, also CJ, a rare bad run from him, but he was at Chartin, I suppose. Yeah, I'm just going to go against him, CJ, because of all the pace that Paul's mentioned. Blocker D, I don't think, is racing at his best at the moment. Wame Friend's certainly going well. And he's got the £10 claim there, or £7 claim, I should say, for Dylan Moe, but he's drawn barrier number 10. So it's going to be a lot harder for him. Um, but he is, out of these ones, the one that I probably give the most chance. Having said that, I haven't snuck him in. No, I've neither. It's, it's just, again, it's one of these even races where the outside Alma Baby is at 30 
and everything else is uh, right in the market. So, mm. uh, you know, I don't think this, the, the conditions of the race suit Wai Mei Friend and from that white barrier on CJ. I, I see, think CJ will soften up um, Fabulous One. I think that they'll take each other on. All right, OK. If they do, if there is a lot of pace, that's going to suit the closers. Yeah. Uh, born in China, this is a big win from, uh, from him. And again, the other horses uh, to take uh, note of. Um, Archippus, he'll get back, he'll flash home as well. And uh, House of Fun, who's just on the, uh, the leader show. The other horse as well, Block of D, is actually in this race as well. Yep, House of Fun uh, looks uh, close to a win. I thought uh, he actually um, was going to win last start, but he got nutted on the wire. And he'll like the pace, because if they sort of sit and then dash, he, he can over-race. Uh, born in China had a good draw this occasion. I think the, the gate's a little bit more awkward for him. Might be a length further back or so, but he will be hitting the line strongly, and we know what Archippus does basically every start. So um, there's a few you can consider out of that lineup. Yeah, I do. I, I've got Born in China and Archippus both in the race because Archippus is if there's if there's a real hot tempo, he'll be the one finishing the fastest. All right, another one that will be on the speed is uh, Fantastic Eight, and what a fantastic record he's got. Eight starts so far, three wins. He's filled the runner-up spot on the other five occasions, but he's up in class. Yeah, lightweight, though. Uh, he should get a nice run just behind the strong pace. He's got barrier number three, and he's had one start at Happy Valley, and he won it, and here it is here. So uh, he's the one for me. I think he can win this race. Yeah, I uh, have got him in. Um, I've got one to beat him. He's a very nice horse going forward. Um, he's going to know he's in a race here because mm. this is a, a race full of depth and quality, um, both with speed horses and closers. It's a good test for him, but he's handled every test so far. Yeah, if he did build on that, he could be something special indeed, couldn't he, shouldn't he? Mm. But uh, that's Fantastic Eight up in class, but on top for you, Paul? Yeah, he looks like he's set it to Happy Valley, so I've got him on top, uh, Fantastic Eight, one most impressively, to beat Archippus, finishing off nicely, born in China, and Mr Genuine, the other closer. With all his pace, I've got those closers in there, but he'll be playing exotics, QQP's 4 5 12. I've never seen Mr Genuine go better. I think uh, he might be the one that closes in. Um, I'm prepared to back him on a, a win-place scenario, uh, Mr Genuine. He's 9.5 for the win at the moment, but 1.1 for a place. If you look at his run, the last time he ran at the Valley, Mr Genuine, second behind Southern Legend, who went to Sha Tin and defeated Nothing I Like More. Fantastic Eight, Archippus, and Fabulous One. I've just scraped him in for fourth. Yeah, Archippus for me, I think they'll go quick, and I think he'll overhaul them as well. Nice trial from him recently as well. Um, as far as this week's stats are concerned, King of the Valley, why not? Yeah, well, the coming up to Christmas, isn't it? So we thought we'd do Casper uh, Founts, and you can see here, 47% first three rate from his 92 runners. This is uh, from 2016. Uh, 24 wins, nine seconds, 10 thirds, you can see. Doctors Delight, the blinkers on the first time. Cheerful Jet's another one that he's got plenty of chances, as he normally does. Yeah. All right, the decent prices as yeah. well. Uh, speaking of prices as well, best bets? Yep, yeah, Phantom Falcon with a lightweight for me. I've got, uh, I, I like him. And uh, Dylan Moe takes that seven pounds off. Just a little bit of cherry on the on the Christmas pudding. And uh, Lizard Feet at twenty one dollars currently. That's an over. Uh, he won't be far away from it. Uh, the lead. And sixteen fifty metres is ideal for him. And we'll play the the play of the day in that one with uh, Ever Laugh and My Blessing. Two ten and twelve. The two Sabre Bills and the Tavistock. <laughs> <laughs> right. Jackpot. I'm going with Mr Cool, race three, number six from Berto Rispoli, who's got a very good barrier. Uh, I think he gets another opportunity to win. And in the first for Neil Callan, whistle up. I think he'll sit in a similar spot to Mr Cool, just on the back of the pace, get his chance. Um, I wanted to include Goodhart success in somewhere, so my uh, play of the day will be Rickfield, Goodhart success and Raw Lee in the staying race. All right, my blessing up in trip. The Tavistock up in trip should eat it up. Tommy Barry from a good draw. That's the best on the programme, race five, number 12. And Hay Run, um, again, from a good draw. He'll love the 2,200 metres as well. And we'll spread the love with the play of the day in race number three, Golden Sleep, Sun Touch. I do like Ha 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 as well. So there you go. Those are the, the best for Wednesday night. And then we back up Saturday. That we do, yeah. We've got a, a quick back up to Saturday and we've got the Griffin Trophy as one of the highlights on that afternoon. All right, we're looking forward to, to that. Uh, but that's the show. Thanks for watching on behalf of Paul Brett and the rest of the team. Hopefully we'll see you at Happy Valley for the Christmas programme when we will be racing to win. Good night. Good night.